Hello, and welcome to Susu's Kindergarten Videos. Today, we are going to talk about growing seeds. It's spring, we're on the second day of spring, so it's a very exciting time, and we're all getting very anxious for spring to be here so we can get outdoors and plant things in our garden. But if you want to get a jump start on growing your seeds. You can start them inside if you have all the right tools. And today we want to talk about what those are and how you proceed to grow seedlings indoors. Because unfortunately, even if you have a southern window, uh, it's really not bright enough to grow seedlings inside. So you need a special light, which I have here. And this is an LED light. And it's specifically for growing seedlings. And what is different about this LED light is it has the red and blue UV lights from the colors from the spectrum uh, to grow seedlings. And you may ask, what is a UV spectrum? Well, when you see the rainbow, you see those seven colors in the rainbow, and those are visible to our eye. And when you're growing plants, you need that bright light. And seedlings really need a high amount of red light. And they also need a fairly high level of blue, but not as much as the red light. So you really want to have the correct grow light, uh, depending on what you're growing. If you're growing house plants, you know, you're going to need something different. Uh, but for seedlings, you need a light that's high in red and blue. And the reason I chose LED lights is because they are cool. Uh, they do not get hot, which is very important for little seedlings. And uh, they also last a really long time, so it's a good investment. So make a good choice when you choose your gray light. And some of the gray lights come with a stand, but this one did not. I thought it did, but it didn't. So my handy dandy husband created this adjustable uh, stand so that I could lower and raise the light as the plants begin to grow and develop. In addition to the grow light, I also purchased uh, a greenhouse jiffy kit uh, that you can get in lots of different places. And you can see it has a plastic covering, uh, which when you cover the seedlings, uh, it creates a little greenhouse effect. Uh, it keeps it warm and the humidity high, which is very important also for growing seedlings. And you can also see here in this tray um, little peat pots that have been compressed and formed into pots so that we can fill it with sterile soil and um, then grow, put our seeds in there and then let them uh, start growing. But these uh, compressed peat comes from bogs and we primarily get our peat from Canada. And there are thousands of acres of bogs. And a bog is a area of land uh, that is very wet. It never dries out. And um, it forms over a long period of time of plants decaying and rotting into that wet bog. Um, there is some controversy over collecting uh, peat from the bogs um, because it does take so long to produce uh, the peat that we utilize. So another form of a soilless mixture that you can use in your seed planting is coconut core. Uh, some people will say coconut core. Um, I think the correct pronunciation is coconut coir. 
And what coconut courier is, uh, and this is a condensed block. Uh, it's pretty heavy and um, it comes from the inside of the coconut husk. And that's a very interesting process. If you ever want to watch that, uh, I would suggest that you do that because it's really interesting how they take the husk off and inside there's this material uh, that they gather and then they compress it and they make multiple things out of this coconut core. Um, rugs, ropes, of course they use this for um, starting seeds and it forms in this block as you can see and what I'm going to do is put it in this bucket and it says to add four and a half quarts of water so I'm going to add this this container holds three and a half quarts and I'm going to slowly pour that over this so that we can watch it expand um, and absorb all this water. Now, the disadvantage to using uh, coconut courier is it comes from India and Sri Lanka and places like that um, that are far away from us. Um, and you can see it expanding right now. It's gotten taller in the bucket which is so interesting. See, it's fallen apart. Uh, so we'll break it up so that it can get down into the water. Um, but it is a, a long distance to um, bring this material to the United States. This will be uh, four and a half quarts total added to the to the coconut courier and you can see uh, what it turns into and this is very moist and it does expand so now I can put it into the pea pots now if you wanted to you could use peat um, loose peat like this not compressed like what our uh, little containers are made out of that's compressed peat. Uh, you can use that, but I've never used coconut courier, so I thought it would be fun to try something different. So we'll do that. And you can also purchase these in little disc like this. And I put the disc inside this cup and put a little water in it, and you can see it looks very similar uh, to what I have from this large block that I just added water to. So that's pretty cool. Now, another thing that you want to remember when you're growing seeds is you want to label your little containers with what you have put in there because when they break dormancy, uh, they are going to grow and they're all going to look pretty much the same until they really get a little bit larger. So make sure that you use uh, a label and a permanent marker to uh, so that it doesn't you know, run away and fade uh, so that you can see it. But you can see here the seeds that I'm going to put in the uh, flat that I have here, and I'm primarily using uh, herbs. I'm going to try to grow some rosemary, some parsley, some oregano, lemon balm, basil, and I'm also going to throw a few uh, flowers in there. Uh, these are Black Eyed Susan vines and hyacinths. Uh, I want to grow uh, hyacinths. These two are vines, so I'll put those on trellises. And then one more herb uh, I want to grow some seeds on is thyme. So I'm going to give this a try. And um, you want to uh, also keep your seedlings misted. So I have a little water bottle here. And once you've planted these, you know, you want to keep the humidity high and keep them moist. 
Uh, if you let little teeny tiny seedlings uh, dry out, they are going to uh, wither right away. Uh, seedlings are like little babies. Uh, you really have to take care of them 24-7. Uh, and this light will uh, stay on for 12 to 15 hours a day. So you would basically uh, either put it on a timer or turn it on when you get up and turn it off when you go to bed because little seedlings need lots of light uh, in order to grow and develop. So the next thing I'm going to do is add our coconut core to the peat pots and um, then plant the seeds. I have now added the coconut core to all the pea pots, as you can see, and I've also put all of the seeds into the cells of each pot. Uh, some of these you can see and some of them you can't, uh, unfortunately, which makes it very difficult uh, to sow these seeds, so you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, here we have the uh, Black Eyed Susan vine. Uh, you can easily see those. Uh, they're fairly large, and the instructions said uh, to push those down uh, about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to go along here and push these down, and then I'm probably going to go back and put some coconut core uh, over the top of them so that they're covered. I'll push them down just a little bit. Now the hyson beam you can see are very large uh, so they were very easy and I'm only going to put one per, per cell here as you can see but I'm not going to push those down uh, just yet because the instructions said to soak them in water for 24 hours uh, because it helps their germination. And that's why it's really important to read the instructions on the back of the seed packets because there really is good information on there. And it's very difficult to remember everything about every seed. So I would encourage you to do that. And it also tells you the planting depth. Now, most of the seeds that I've planted, uh, you only push down um, a quarter of an inch, uh, which is not very far. And like I said, I'm going to go back and um, cover these up with more coconut core. But you can see right here this thyme seed. Uh, the only reason I can see it is because it's gray. It's a different color than the coconut core. So, um, so the rosemary, uh, you can also see those. Now, they had special instructions. Um, you're to plant those thicker than you would most things, probably because the germination rate is not as good uh, with the rosemary as it is with some of the other uh, plants and seeds that I'm planting. Um, so, and you only plant those an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, so that's very important. The oregano was the same way, only an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, and the oregano, I really can't even see, so I will take some coconut courier and sprinkle it over the top. The parsley right here in the corner, you can see the seeds on that. Um, they're also a different color than the uh, medium that we've got them on top of. So here we are ready to go and there are some things that you want to remember. Uh, you need a lot of light. We talked about uh, high levels of red and blue lights from the UV spectrum to grow seedlings. And I will lower this. Uh, as you can see, I can't adjust the height on this. I'm going to lower it down uh, just above the seedlings. Um, 
when I put the lid on. That's another thing I'm going to do is put the lid over this so that I create a greenhouse effect. We want to keep the seeds warm between 65 and 75 degrees is really important for seedlings because if you don't, they tend to get a disease called damping off uh, and they will just collapse. The seed stem bends over and uh, unfortunately uh, they fail to thrive uh, if the temperatures get too cool. So make sure you have your temperatures between 65 and 75 degrees. I do have a little table that I'm going to set this whole thing on and I will turn on the light in the morning and turn it off when I go to bed at night. Uh, and I'm also going to miss these uh, once we uh, get everything covered up, I'm going to go back and miss these. And I will probably miss them uh, daily just to keep the humidity up. And then when the seedlings get a little larger, I will fill uh, this flat up, which is holding the peat cells. Uh, I will put water in this tray because there's no holes in there. Uh, and it'll be able to um, filtrate up to the seedlings uh, through the peat pot and the coconut courier. And uh, it will evenly provide moisture to the seedlings. And then if there's a lot left in the tray, I will just dump that out because you don't want them to be too wet. Uh, you want them to be just right, as Goldilocks uh, says. So if you follow those few simple rules, I think you will be very successful in growing seeds for this spring. So I'm really excited to get these planted and I'm really looking forward to seeing when the seedlings uh, pop up and I will check back with you uh, when that does happen and let you know uh, how we're doing and what the germination rate is on all these herbs and just a couple of vines uh, that I'm planting. So over and out from Susie's Garden, I hope you learned a lot. Love you.